All right? But there is something special about this. This is a trinomial, correct? Yes? And the best thing that I always like to look at, we're, we're going to get into the last one, which isn't one of these problems, but these are what we call special factoring techniques. And the best thing I like, want you guys to look at is whenever you have square numbers, numbers that you can take the square root of and get an integer. Is 16 a square number? Yeah. Yeah, so it's square root of 16 is 4, right? Is x squared a square number? Yeah, it's x, right? Is 9 a square number? Nine. Yes. So I want, did you guys see all that method? That took me eight minutes to go through that. Obviously, I was explaining everything. But that took a long time, right? So if we had any way that we could expedite this, because to do it that way, we'd have to multiply 16 times 9, and then find the two numbers that multiply to give you that, but then add to give you negative 24, right? Does anybody see where I'm going with this? this could, that could take a while. So if you look at this and you notice that you have square terms and square terms, well, remember what the factoring looks like. It's you know binomial times a binomial. So let's look at these first two terms. What two numbers, if these are square, what two numbers that are exactly the same can multiply to give me 16x squared? 4x. 4x. And then what about two numbers that multiply to give me 9? 3. 3 and 3. But one thing we've got to be careful with is remember, when you multiply your middle terms, they're going to be adding to give you a negative. So if these two are positive, and um, if my middle term is negative, then my two values are going to have to be negative 3 and negative 3. If this was a positive 24, then it would be positive 3 and positive 3. Okay? So therefore, then I can just rewrite. I could use zero product property from here. Or Brandon, I could just write this as 4x minus 3 squared equals 0. Now I can undo the square root. Taking the square root of 0 is not going to do any. That's just going to equal 0. You guys see how easy that problem was? Done, right? Yes, question. Because, all right. So you agree with me that I'm doing FOIL again. 4x times 4x is 16x squared. Yes? Negative 3 times negative 3 does give you positive 9, right? Now remember, what we're going to do to find the middle terms, you've got to multiply the inner and the outer. So negative 3 times 4x is negative 12x. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. Negative 12x plus negative 12x is negative 24x. Basically, just the, the general rule, if if the middle term's negative, your two factors are negative. If the middle term's positive, your two factors will be positive of a perfect square trinomial. Does anybody have any questions for this, though? So special factoring techniques, you guys can see, can be very, very helpful because it can reduce a lot of time that you